Hey guys, it's me Ryan and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be doing an overlockers for beginners video. Um, this video has been really really highly requested so I'm going to be finally sitting down today and filming this for you guys because you have been asking for it for ages. Um, a few of you that I have in mind specifically has been asking for it so it's coming, it's finally here and I'm really excited to film this and to show you guys um, the overlocker because I know some people including myself when they first think about getting an overlocker or when they first do get an overlocker it can be really really scary because they are really intimidating compared to normal just sewing machines because you know they got a knife on them they have two needles and they go they tend to go much faster than your average sewing machine um, especially domestic so if you guys want to know more about overlockers or you just want to get more confident on them this is going to be the perfect video for you because i'm going to be going through everything from the basics so i'm going to be going through the dials on the machine the what's on there to the types of stitches and demoing them as well so i'm hoping this video will help some of you guys out there um, if it does let me know below and yeah let's just get right into the video So an overlocker or a serger as they know more in America is a machine that is used primarily for knitted fabrics. They can be used for finishing edges on knitted fabrics as well as wovens and also for constructed full knitted garments. And you can use the overlocker to finish edges on woven fabrics and also to finish woven seams but primarily they are used on uh, knitted fabrics because that is what they are made for. When it comes to woven seams and woven edges that you want to finish um, primarily especially when it comes to seams on woven fabrics you can use different uh, techniques of seam finishing which I will demonstrate in future videos which will be coming up in the next few weeks because I'm going to be doing an entire series on seams on and on higher end seam finishes so if you guys want to know more about finishing woven fabric seams please be sure to look out for that because it is different to um, knitted fabrics and knitted garments because like I said um, the overlocker is primarily used for knitted fabrics and knitted garments but you can use it on woven seams and finishing woven garments but it is um, less common to see and also use the overlocker to, to hem um, some garments so the hem that an overlocker does is called a rolled hem or a pin hem it's a really really small and fine hem um, it's mainly used on finer fabrics it can be used on the end of dresses if there is like a finer element to the end of it or it's commonly seen on things like napkins and um, decor decorative tableware that's made out of fabrics or placemats it can also be used on um, I think they call it infinity scarfs, which I think they're just scarfs that wrap, keep wrapping around your neck. So on an overlocker, there are practically four main dials or switches that you will see um, on domestic overlockers they do have these as well on industrial machines but today I am going to be on a domestic because that is commonly what you guys are going to have at home including me um, and if you already work in industry you will know all of this anyway but there are four main switches or dials that are on the overlocker and they are the tension discs or the tension dials the stitch length um, the stitch width and also the differential feed um, the main I'm going to say the main two switches or dials you're going to be focused on is actually the stitch length and also the differential feed and I will demonstrate why today in this video but you will also play about with the stitch width depending on what you're doing and what your project is again I will explain all about that later um, so yeah those are the four main things or the main dials that you guys will see on an overlocker and the ones you need to pay attention to the most the only thing I won't be showing you in today's video is how to actually thread an overlocker simply because I've an entire separate video on that which I will link up there so or there I'm not sure which side it on but up here one of these sides I will um, that is the link to the how to thread an overlocker video again in that video I'm using my own domestic overlocker but primarily every brand of overlockers and every um, type of overlocker whether that's domestic or industrial thread pretty much the same
So on your overlocker, there are four or five um, main stitches that you guys should know about. So if you're working on um, your typical overlocker, especially domestic, are always going to be four thread overlockers. You can get five thread, um, but I'm not sure if they are most, they are not as popular when it comes to domestic overlockers. I know you do use them in industry. The only difference between a four thread and five thread is the, they do the exact same stitching, but the five thread is it will do an extra line of straight stitching within the, the within those stitches just to add that little bit more of security to the stitch. So it's basically finishing the edge and um, keeping the fabrics together, like stitch them together, but it will also add an extra straight stitch in there. Um, that is literally the only difference between a four thread overlock and a five thread overlocker. Um, if you guys have a four thread overlock at home, just like I do, they will work perfectly fine. If you guys have seen my videos um, like previously, you will have seen I've constructed t-shirts on this overlocker and they are perfectly fine and really, really strong. So um, yeah, those are just the main differences. But the stitches I'm going to be demonstrating to, to you guys today, which I feel are the most important stitches um, and the most common, are the four thread overlock stitch the three thread overlock stitch, the flat lock stitch, and also the rolled hem stitch. So those are the four things I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys today. Um, I will also tell you guys why they are used and when they are used and how they can be used. Uh, let's get straight on into actually demonstrating these stitches to you guys and how they are used and how to actually do them. So this here is going to be, or what looks like, a standard domestic overlocker. Um, industry, industrial overlockers don't look too much different. Um, they will have the same dials and, you know, the same needles. Well, not same needles, but they'll have needles, they'll have knives. They'll have the same feet. Um, they will look pretty much similar. They won't be a drastic difference. So these are your tension dials here. And on my machine, they all control the tension, of course, of the stitching and also of the loopers so um i'm just going to tell you and show you guys which dial is which and what it does on my machine um they will do the same thing on your machines it they might just be like i said look different or in a different place so this dial here is for the left needle tension on my machine the one next to it is for the right needle tension that one there towards the end is for the upper looper tension and then the one on the very end is for the lower loop tension. So in a general rule of thumb, um, for these tension settings, it will also say in your machine manual, and I didn't read the manual for my um, normal sewing machine, but for my overlocker I did, because they are different, and they are used differently to a norm normal um, sewing machine. So I do recommend you guys read your manuals, because that will be very, very helpful. But as a general rule of thumb, um, for tension, your tension settings will typically be between two and four on your machines. Of course, they will change depending on what fabric you're using or what um, type of stitch. The next dial I want to show you is the stitch length dial. So that is here on my machine and there is the dial that controls it. So the stitch length is basically um, how close together your stitches are. Um, so typically again, I just keep mine on about a three to four. You don't want it too, sh um, you don't want the number too low, but you also don't want it too high because the lower it is, the stitching will be more dense. So it will be closer together and the higher it is, your stitching will be more sparse. So it will be, um, wider and it won't be, it'll be further apart. And depending on the lock you want, you know, you might want to increase the number or decrease the number, but I keep it on a three, about three to four because that is just a general rule. So the next dial I want to show you guys is actually the differential feed dial. And this is one of the most important things on your overlocker. So please be sure to learn about this and again, look in your manual for your model. 
Um, so this is a differential feed, that's the number, and that is the dial for it. So the differential feed dial is the dial that controls the um, feed dogs underneath your presser foot. So your presser foot is here, there, and underneath there, just like a normal sewing machine, there are two sets of feed dogs. And those are the things that pull your fabric through the machine. Um, so the differential feed controls the movement of both the front and the rear feed dogs. So for example, when the differential feed is set to one, just like mine is there, as you guys can see, it is set to one. The front feed dogs, um, the feed dogs are moving at the same speed. So your fabric is gonna feed through evenly and it should come out all even and it shouldn't be stretched or gathered at all. So when your differential feed is set to one, your fabric should be even and go through your machine evenly. When the differential feed is set to less than one, the front feed dogs will move slower than the rear feed dogs, stretching the fabric as it is sewn and as it's pulled through the machine. This is effective on more lightweight fabrics that may pucker, because um, if it's on a one and it goes through, it might pucker because it is a finer or lightweight fabric. So turning your differential feed down will help that. the differential feed is set to greater than one the front feed dogs will move faster than the rear feed dogs and that will cause the fabric to gather as its own this function will be better and it actually works in assisting in removing the rippling when surging stretch fabrics so i will show you guys also examples of this i will put my i'll leave my differential feed at zero i will turn it up and turn it down so you guys can see um, the difference on that but again differential feed is one of the most important dials on your overlocker and again be sure to consult your manual but those are the basic rules for it. So then the other dials I wanted to show you guys this one here is just your hand wheel so it will pull your needles up and down um, that is basic, you guys all know about them, they are not complicated at all. This button here, as you guys can see, it says STD, which stands for standard, and then it says R. So that is the switch you will move to RH, which stands for rolled hem, when you're doing a rolled hem, which again, I will demonstrate later. And then the other dial I wanted to tell you guys and mention about is the stitch width dial. So this is when you sew fabric for your overlocker, the stitch that is right on the edge of your piece of fabric, um, if that is off, so it's not sitting perfectly on the edge, it is because your stitch width is too low and you need to higher it in order to get the perfect um, stitch on the edge of your fabric. And then you can use this to adjust it. Um, so you would turn it back clockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on what you want to do. Um, but my machine is set perfectly so I'm not going to fuss about with it because it is really temperamental but I will put up an example again an example image of when your um, stitch width is too wide or it is too shallow so I will put an example on the screen of that So now I'm going to start to demonstrate the stitches. So the first stitch I'm going to demonstrate is the most common and also probably the one that you guys will use most and that is the four thread overlock stitch. So as you guys can see I have all four of my threads threaded. So I'm just going to stitch up um, just a random side of calico and I will show you guys how that four thread looks. So this is the four thread overlock. My stitch settings are just on a standard stitch. And yeah, um, I'm just gonna demonstrate that. Again, all four threads are threaded and my settings are my settings I like for this type of stitch. Again, um, my left needle tension is on three and a half. My right needle is on three and a half. My upper loop tension is on two and a half and my lower loop tension is on three and a half. What you're going to want to do is put your fabric in by the foot. Now you can just start stitching because the um, feed dogs will actually pull it through for you. 
But what I'm going to do, just because this is a really basic beginner's video, I'm going to lift my presser foot up and the presser foot lifter lever is at the back. So I'm going to lift it up like that. I'm going to put my fabric underneath and I'm just going to cut about 5mm of fabric off with my knife like that. Put, lower the presser foot, hold the fabric and then I'm just going to start stitching. And again, you don't have to um, pull your fabric from the back because the feed dog's doing everything for you. Just leave the fabric or through out on its own. And then as you come to the end, um, you're not just gonna want to um, stop here and then lift your foot and pull it out. You're actually gonna want to chain off. So with overlockers and, and some cover stitches, you can chain off. Um, you can't do it with a regular sewing machine, a straight stitch machine, but you can with an overlocker, this is what they're made to do as well. So you're just going to, at the end, grab your fabric from behind and then simply just keep stitching and chain off like this. And then when you've chained off about 10-15 centimetres, I got a thread cutter on the side, just pull it, it'll cut your thread. And always make sure before you start stitching, you have a chain of thread about 10 centimeters long um, behind your foot because that will just ensure that the stitching starts evenly and perfect. And also make sure when you chain off that you still have that ready for the next lot. Um, and that is your standard four thread overlock. So as you guys can see, this is your standard four thread overlock. Um, my stitch width, as you can see, right on the very edge of the fabric, the stitching is laying right on the edge, so I, my stitch width is perfect. My tensions are all perfect, and again, this is just a standard four thread overlock. This is what it looks like. That is the front side, I guess. And then this here is the back side. As you can see, tensions are perfect, and I'm really, really happy. So that is what your standard four thread overlock should look like. So now you guys know how to do a four thread overlock, I'm going to be showing you a three thread overlock. This is pretty much the same thing, but without the right needle. Um, this is used in constructing seams and knitted garments, like I said, um, or for finishing. But I don't recommend you guys actually use it to construct simply because without that extra needle in there and that extra stitch, it is gonna be a bit weaker. It's not gonna to be too much weaker, but it is not gonna be as strong at all as a four thread stitch, um, which is the strongest one on most domestic overlocking machines. So what you're first gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to remove your right needle thread. Um, you should remove your right needle as well, but I'm not going to simply because I use a four thread overlock stitch all the time and putting needles back in is just a pain for me personally because of my disability. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is cut the right needle thread here at the top there, like that. And what you're gonna wanna do to get it out from the actual like looper system down here is I'm gonna remove my thread trim trap and open that up as best I can, like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my hand wheel away from me. I'm going to lift my presser foot first. I'm going to pull that, turn my hand wheel away from me. And what that will do is it will make the, um, it will make all of your threads actually just like threads again. So it's not chaining as you guys can see there. And then what I'm going to do is keep pulling and then as you can see here, my fourth thread, my right needle thread is out and I'm just gonna pull these until there's a lot like that. And then I'm just going to turn my hand wheel towards me again. I'm gonna put my pressure foot down this time. And once that thread's out, I'm gonna turn the hand wheel again just to make sure that it's chaining over the stitch finger, which it is. So once you've done that, Turn your hand wheel, start turning your hand wheel towards you to make sure that it's chaining again and it is. So um, at this point you would normally remove the right needle, but like I said I'm not going to. So I'm just going to chain off and create a chain with these. Your right needle thread is removed and for you guys your right needle as well. 
you're, you're just now you're ready to do a three thread overlock seam. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you guys the difference between the three thread and the four thread. And again, chaining off at the end. So this here on the right is my four thread overlock and this here on the left is my three thread overlock. Now you guys can probably notice a difference straight away. So on the four thread here, see this bottom line of stitching right here, which is your left needle, this very bottom line. And then just under this Y here where my finger is, that there is the right needle. So the bottom line of straight stitching going across here, all the way across is your left needle. And then this one right here, as you can see, which makes, which looks like the Y, like the bubble, it kind of looks like a hump right there. That in there is going to be your right needle stitch, which again holds the fabric in place and makes the seam much stronger. So this here is the free thread overlock. So as you guys can see, it comes down straight, like in a diagonal. There's no Y shape. These lines here do not look like Ys. And whereas on the other one, there's the bottom row. See this bottom row of stitching here? That's the left needle. Whereas on the other one, the right needle went across just about here. And so it made this part here look like a bump. That's not present. So hopefully you guys can see the difference between this three thread overlock and the four thread. Again, the three thread, it is... You can use it to construct things. Um, you can use it to construct things that don't get, won't get a lot of wear, but I don't recommend it simply because it is simply just not as strong, but it is still a really good stitch if you really need to use it or you have no other choice. Next stitch I'm gonna show you guys, which I think is quite common, is actually the three thread flat lock that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. This is seen a lot on active wear, and you can also use it to knit, um, to knit. <laughs> you can also use it to hem knit. Um, this is done by a really low um, tension on your needle, then a really high tension on your lower looper. And um, I will show you guys how to do it, then I will show you the result. So normally, um, when we done the three thread overlock stitch earlier, when we took our right needle out, if you actually don't have a right needle in your machine, set the tension to zero. But because I still have my needle in, I'm just gonna leave it there. But if you do take a needle out, just push that tension dial down to zero, because there's no thread in there to have tension on. My lower loop of tension here on the end, I'm gonna push that up to about a six. Um, my machine does go up to a nine, but I don't want it that high. So I've got a really low, I got a really high loop of tension. Turn your lower loop of tension up um, high. I'm going to put mine on a six and I put my left needle tension down to a one. Um, you don't want it down, you don't want to put it on a zero because you don't want no tension at all on the thread. You just want some tension that's very low. So now you've done that. Um, if you guys at home have took your needle, your right needle out um, and you have the same machine as me or you're going to test the same settings as me, the number should be one tension one on your left needle um, if you don't have the right needle in zero but I do so I'm just gonna leave the tension as it is then I, my regular tension on my upper looper which is two and a half and then a six on my lower looper so what you're gonna want to do is take your fabric that you're stitching on and you're gonna want to stitch on the fold you're gonna be cutting the fabric on the fold and then just put this through your machine So there's my seam, what I've um, folded. I'm going to pull the fabric, open it up like that. And then I'm going to pull it apart slowly and you guys will see the effect. So when you pull it like that, you guys can see the left needle stitches there. And that is the effect it gives so as you guys can see that is kind of almost like a ladder effect if it will focus it is a really beautiful finish i see this more of a decorative method um, i think it's absolutely beautiful especially if you get creative with it if you get different colored threads to your fabrics but yeah that is what it looks like on the right side of your garment 
on the inside on the actual seam it looks like that so this is the result that the three thread flat block gives you i think it's absolutely beautiful um again make sure you have the lowest tension setting that is not zero on your left needle and then a high tension setting on your lower looper um, leave your upper looper the way it is and then just leave your um, right needle on a zero if it's not in so the last stitch i'm going to show you guys how to do and the, again one of the most common is the rolled hem so that is a really fine hem that you create on the overlocker you can create them on domestic machines as well with a rolled hem foot but i do i do them on the overlocker if i need to because it's just easier um so the first thing we want to change is earlier on we had the left needle in and the right needle out now you want the left needle out and the right needle in so make sure your left needle is out and your right needle is in and threaded this time um, again my left needle is still in because I don't take it out but it's just not threaded so you're going to need your right needle in and your upper looper and of course your lower looper are all threaded tensions on their normal tension setting so I'm going to put mine back down and then what you're going to want to change is the stitch length now on my machine it I have a setting called R now R stands for rolled hem because the rolled hem is really really fine so the stitches are really really close together so just change that to R differential feed leave it and this button here this slide here on my machine you guys will also have one again like I said in the beginning of the video that's standard which is on now for everything else and then R H is for rolled hem so switch that over to rolled hem and then the other thing the last thing you need to change is actually you need to disengage the stitch finger so to do that you're going to want to open up the side of your machine like this disengage your knife so my machine you push this lever in and tilt the knife forward until it clicks into position underneath so now my knife is disengaged and you need to do you need to disengage the knife first in order to pull the stitch finger back otherwise it won't because the knife will block it so now my knife is disengaged we can pull the stitch finger forward from the s again for standard to the r for rolled hem in order to pull the stitch finger from standard to rolled hem you're going to take this lever here your machine will have a similar push this lever forward so the lower knife cutter appears and pulls out and then once that is pushed out um, it's clear for the stitch finger to be pulled back to ha, which is for rolled hem, and then leave that to go back under. And the last thing you want to do before we are ready to do a rolled hem is actually your cutting width die, which is here, is you're going to want to turn this so it's in and as close to your machine as far as possible. You do not want that out here anywhere. You want to turn it so it pulls it in. And now we are ready to do a rolled hem. You're going to want to leave your knife disengaged for this as well. So for rolled hem, you can do them on both woven and knit fabrics. Of course, knit fabrics will be better and are more common. I'm just going to demonstrate today on a piece of calico. Um, you are, they are most common on finer fabrics as well because they are easier and just give it a more neater finish and just a nicer finish in general. Um, so now your machine is all ready to do a rolled hem. What you're going to want to do is put your fabric under your foot like this and then simply start stitching this is what a rolled hem on the over looks like as you can see it's a very very fine hem it's really really neat it looks beautiful on more finer fabrics if I had a finer fabric here I would show you but you guys get the idea um, it's absolutely stunning it's really really discreet um, and yeah this is a rolled hem on an overlocker by disengaging the stitch finger it allows the overlocker to roll the actual end of the fabric and of course with disengaging the knife um, it allows the overlocker to roll the end of the fabric under and stitch it at the same time so this is what a rolled hem looks like on the overlocker it is absolutely stunning So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you learned something from this video if, or if this video helped you in any way at all, please let me know down below. And again, give this video a thumbs up. 
Comment also down below video ideas if you guys any have anything specific you want to see. Let me know down below and I will get that filmed and up for you guys. Also be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Be sure to hit that notification bell icon next to the subscribe button so every time I upload a new video you guys will get notified straight away and also follow me down below on Instagram where you will see behind the scenes of me filming these videos you will see things that I do in my day to day life you will also see me in university and things I'm doing there um, so it's going to be more in, in university it'll be more industry um, standard setting if that makes sense so yeah be sure to follow me on Instagram for a lot more content and again thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.